this project now is the largest project that the council has taken on so far and probably is the largest one it will ever do. It takes the right combination of skills and people coming together to see projects like this happen. The Watershed Council's number one priority has been fish passage throughout the main stem Kalapuya River. You can do upland work, you can do you know, riparian work, but if the fish aren't able to access the habitat, it doesn't do any good. The Sodom Dam is part of a water regulating system that was needed to uh, keep water at the Thompson's Mills. The Kalapuya Channel, because it's a historic river channel, it has the best potential for habitat. It has um, more intact riparian forest. Uh, it has cooler summer water temperatures. So our fisheries agencies really wanted to see summer flows maintained in the Kalapuya. But we have to have also flow in the Sodom because there are water rights that are um, draw from the Sodom Channel and if we don't have water flowing in the summertime eventually it would grow in with vegetation and wouldn't provide that wintertime flood water conveyance that's required and so because the human infrastructure is built up over the last 150 years around having this split flow that really needs to be maintained and so the solution that was arrived at to achieve that split flow was a series of riffles and um, we had 12 feet of elevation that we needed to maintain from the um, pool at the base of the former dam to the height. So we're reconstructing the channel. Uh, it'll be a, more of a pool riffle system um, at about a 1% slope. And we're gonna have uh, three constructed riffles that'll be pretty significant structures that are uh, basically non-mobile. They'll be pretty much anchoring the, the gradient of the stream in here. And then we'll also be creating habitat by creating pools uh, in between those riffles and then incorporating large wood vegetation um, and other natural features so that there's plenty of habitat features in, included in the restoration. took um, one engineered solution from a different era um, and a different way of thinking and a different understanding of um, ecology and water needs, fish needs, and replaced it with a more modern version of the same thing. We're still getting the same service that that former dam provided. We're getting that flow partitioning, um, but we're doing it in a method that still allows the river to have a lot of control over the sediment distribution, fish still can um, migrate through the system, uh, and people can come here and have an experience of seeing a flowing river versus a stagnant pool. This will be the biggest um, storm event that we've had since 1996. It's going to be somewhere between a 20 and a 40 year event for the Kalapuya. Um, the main component of the project was to control flow partitioning at the bifurcation. It was a critical element for landowners um, as well as the agency folks involved in the project and that component of the project is functioning perfectly. Um, the bifurcation split providing flow down the Kalapuya and the Sodom um, has remained free of vegetation and debris um, washing into it and so we have the um, managed flow occurring down both channels. Historically this would have been just blocked off solid with debris. Yeah so the sweeping velocity is coming around the corner and carrying everything down, down the bottom which is what we wanted to see happen. The effects that we're seeing from that one large event are tremendous. Finally we can say that restoration and roughness works. It 
actually really works. You know, we're seeing floodplains being activated. We're seeing the side channels that we never saw before. We're seeing wood being collected on these pilings. We're seeing processes and floodplain um, health come alive before our very eyes. In the state of Oregon, Water Resources Department keeps a database of dams. But to be in that database, the dam has to be higher than 10 feet or impound more than 10 acre feet of water. None of the dams that were removed on the Kalapuya qualified for that database. So we have to learn the lessons from these to take forward because there are literally thousands of dams in the state of Oregon in this size range that are going to need to be um, repaired, removed, um, or retrofitted. Unlike other watersheds in the Willamette, we don't have the large Army Corps structures. And so by spending a lot of um, time on the fish passage, even with the small dam removal, we're opening up a significant amount of migration um, to all native fish species, not just the salmon throughout this basin. The fact that the fish can get to our cool headwater habitat um, from here on out is um, a huge bonus to agencies that are looking for project opportunities that don't have that major limiting factor of an Army Corps fish passage issue. This dam removal and this fish passage effort is so much more than the concrete removal and the logs that have been placed and these habitat structures. It's a real um, symbol of the Watershed Council movement in Oregon, that it's about the people, it's about the stakeholders, and the landowners coming together for consensus decision around really complex water resources issues.